on SEC. The crew discuss what it takes to be a leader in the hobby. Then, with the NFL playoffs in full swing, the crew break down the red-hot Joe Burrow card market. Coming up now on SEC. Welcome to episode 46 of Sports Cards Culture. I'm Chris at Instagram, Chris underscore HOJ, here with Nick at Stiff Arm Wax, Josh at Cardboard underscore Chronicles, and Christina at Christina's PC. First topic of today, leadership in the hobby. We won't spend too much time on this topic, but I wanted to open today's show by reflecting for a moment on leadership in the sports card industry. Our hobby was recently rocked with the fake Pokemon case scandal. And there will likely be more scandals in the months and years to come. I think that's a safe bet. For sure. So I want to start with a straightforward question and a big question for Josh and Christina. And that question is, what is good hobby leadership? And I'll give you guys a moment to collect your thoughts on what is good hobby leadership. And I'll give my answer. So to me, hobby leadership is putting the interests of the hobby above your own. A good leader will put more into the hobby than they take out of it. They will do everything in their power to make sure the hobby is a fun place to be. They'll go out of their way to help others learn and enjoy sports card collecting. And on the other hand, a bad leader in the hobby is someone who cares more about their own self-promotion than they care about the flourishing of the sports card industry. They use the hobby for their own personal achievements and then neglect the hobby when it's not serving them They hop from one fad to the next with no real loyalty to cards or to collectors. So for me, hobby leadership is all about putting the community and the industry first, and it really isn't any more complicated than that. All right, let me pass this one off first to Josh, and then Christina will take us home. Yeah, I think you hit it on the head. I think um, the only thing I'll add really is that it's pretty much everything you described and how you accomplish those things through your own actions. Um, You know, how you can show others what you're doing by what you do yourself and the, you know, serving the community, serving the hobby. You can only control yourself. And so what what you do really reflects on on everybody and and what they watch you do is is how they learn and and follow your lead. I have a few examples as well. I think um, these are some, some pretty decent ones. Helping the community with data about a particular niche within the hobby that you have a lot of knowledge on that maybe others can learn from. Um, connecting collectors to cards they're after without expecting anything in return. I think that's what keeps the hobby cycle kind of going on and on is people finding cards they're after. Giving cards to kids uh, looking to get started in the hobby, that's an easy way to get someone new into the hobby and keep them in long term, hopefully. Creating content that is helpful for everyone, not just yourself, that's sorely lacking right now. Uh, having another hobby members back when they're mistreated, um, you know, keeping keeping your friends, um, you know, on your side and, and keeping things moving forward, I think is great. Standing up for what's right when it's not the popular opinion. We saw some examples of that in Dallas this week. Um, maybe some people thought it was easier to jump on and, you know, scream at this guy, but maybe maybe it wasn't the best decision and maybe we need to stand up. Um, and I think these things apply to leadership in, in all aspects of life, not just in cards. But the irony here, uh, Chris, is that if you do these things, I think you will actually be more successful individually uh, and financially in the long run. Um, people want to take the shortcut and pump their own NFT projects and get rich quick. But the reality is, if you go about things the right way and you, and you do them slowly over time and you're consistent, uh, you'll be rewarded with a really strong network and community around you. Well said. I don't know how you're going to follow that one, Christina, but just, uh, yeah. your turn. What is what is leadership in the hobby? You know, I I am fortunate enough that uh, to my right are two incredibly intelligent gentlemen, and they are... I sense a cop-out coming. <laughs> <laughs> they are, to me, a prime example of what it is to be a good leader in the hobby, and every day I try to emulate you two. <laughs> All right, well... Not going to be able to disagree with that one too much. Well done. Masterfully done, Christina. Thank you. The secret leader. <laughs> Christina put it on the master class in leadership from behind the curtain. Okay, <laughs> next topic up for today. I have a game for all of us, a three-question game. Yay. And I want Josh, Christina, and Nick to participate in this game. So using the internal analytics for the Card Ladder website, I was able to come up with a few questions that shed light on what people are searching Card Ladder for. Question number one, 
And this question is going to go to Nick to answer first. It will go Nick, Christina, Josh. Question number one, what is the most viewed card profile on Card Ladder Pro as distinguished from the free mobile app and the free website? On Card Ladder Pro, what's the most viewed card profile in the last month? Is it A, the 86 Fleer Base Michael Jordan PSA 8? B, the 2019 Prism Base John Morant PSA 10? C, the Topps Update Mike Trout PSA 10 2011? Or is it D, the 2003 Topps Chrome Base LeBron PSA 10? Which one is it, Nick? Well, after looking at one through four, um, I the, the the thread of similarities with Michael Jordan and LeBron, and I guess you could even throw Trout in there. Is they're kind of some of those are already certified goats, but like Trout is kind of the modern goat for baseball. But John Morant isn't yet, obviously, and it would be Zion or Luca or. So that's the only thing I can really go off of. I would have to say number two, the 2019 Prism Base John ja Morant PSA 10. All right. Nick says John ja Morant. Christina, what do you say? He's like, A. Christina says Michael Jordan. And Josh, what do you say? I think I'm going to be wrong, but I really like my answer because it's clever. Uh, I'm going to say three, the Mike Trout, because our pro members are really smart and they're getting ahead of the fact that Trout's been out of the limelight for a while. And they're researching his card values to see if they can jump on it. Ooh, I like <laughs> in, that. In keeping with the tradition of the card letter game shows, <laughs> you all got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 2003 Topps Chrome Base LeBron PSA 10. Although I think Josh's answer applies to that card as well because the LeBron market has been pretty flat lately, and I think smart people are taking a close look at LeBron cards right now. Now, real quick, so where did you get the other three answers the from? Other were three these the other three were... Um, no, they were not the top four, but they were among the top 12. Okay. And, by the way, the LeBron was more than twice... was viewed more than twice as many times as number two. So the LeBron is way out in first place. Are these individual users or just individual views? Because we might have some people just clicking over and over on the same card profile. <laughs> just for this game? Just for this game. <laughs> it's unique users, Christina. Okay, question number two. Zero, zero, zero. Three-way tie right now. Christina will answer first, Josh second, Nick third. You know, it's not fun being on the other end of this. No, it's not. Yeah, welcome, <laughs> welcome to my life. I like hosting. All right, number welcome two. Welcome to my life. Number two. This is very yes. important. You'll have one more chance after yes. this. What is the most viewed card profile for card ladder free users? Not pro for card ladder free because as you all know there's a card ladder free light version of the mobile application and the web application that anybody can access and get their fingertips on all sorts of data so over the last month which card profile is most viewed by the free users michael jordan rookie base psa 8 a b 2018 prison base luka Doncic psa 10 c 2003 Pokemon Sky Ridge Hollow Charizard PSA 10 or D 2005 Upper Deck Young Guns Alexander Ovechkin PSA 10 I'm gonna go with D OV okay Christina says OV Josh what do you say I'm just gonna play the numbers game here and go with to the Luka Doncic PSA 10 Ah, uh, what do you mean by numbers game? Just because there's so many copies of it? Well, I mean, like, the Sky Ridge is a pretty rare card. I'm not sure a lot of people are searching hockey if you're going for, like, the top. So it's between the Luka and the Jordan for me. And I don't know. There's, like, a ton of those Luka cards. People are just searching them, see where they're at. Okay. And Nick, what do you say? <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I'm going to spread it out, but it's not going to be to the other one Josh suggested. I think only based off the hype around the Pokemon box from logan paul that perhaps maybe but that's the sky ridge you can't get in that box right no yeah so may, okay so i uh lied about everything i just said <laughs> i'm then going to go with the to also spread it out i'll go with the michael jordan the the 1986 fleer base michael jordan psa 8 number one are you sure that's your final answer yes it is 
You're super sure? I am super <laughs> duper. It is the Michael Jordan 1986 <sighs> Fleer Base PSA 8. I hate games. All right, Nick has one, and now Josh Christina will vie for the tie as Josh will answer first. Question number three Who is the most searched athlete on Card Ladder, pro and free? Combined, who is the most searched athlete over the last 30 days? A, Joe Burrow, B, LaMelo Ball, C, Juan Soto, D, John Morant. Josh is up first. It's either Burrow or Morant, in my opinion. So I'll say, man, it's got to be Burrow. It's got to be Burrow. He's just on fire right now. Josh says Joe Burrow. Nick, what do you say? I was in agreement. It was either Joe Burrow or John Morant. In particular, because, yeah, with Josh, Joe Burrow is, like, crushing it right now. Good luck to the Bengals in the playoffs. And John Morant already came up in the first question, so he's one of the top 12. It's his card, but obviously they probably search his name, too. So then I will take number four, John Morant. Nick takes John Morant and Christina. What is the answer to number three? You should just give me the answer. <laughs> Well, what if one of the two already picked the answer? Then how could I give you the answer? That's okay. You should just give it to me. All right. I'll, it's one of the four that I listed. <laughs> yeah, that helps. I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Juan Soto. And the answer is John ja Morant. John ja Morant is the most searched athlete on Card Ladder in the last month. Congrats to Stiff Arm Wax for Yay. winning the game. All right. But... What Josh said is absolutely correct. Joe Burrow, his cards are red hot right now. And oh, he that's was... why he said Joe Burrow. <laughs> and Joe Burrow. Well, the next section's all about Joe Burrow. I really love a good segue, so. Uh, yeah. Joe Burrow, his cards are red hot, and he is. He is I, I think if we would have only looked at the last two weeks, Joe Burrow may have won. And so let's talk about Joe Burrow and his card market to close the show. Wait, but real quick, why do you think John Morant is up? Is there any analysis on? Is it because of that block on the Lakers? Is he just is the Grizzlies doing well? The Grizzlies are doing very well, nine and one in their last ten, and lost if, to the Mavs. And uh, coming for that number one seed in the West, although they've still got some ground to make up if they want to catch Phoenix. And Morant has emerged as an MVP candidate, and you know he's he's playing at the level of a very elite point guard plus he's second in fan votes for the all-star let's not get into that there Moving you go on. he's definitely having a breakout season after he had a breakout season last year too all right but moving on to joe burrow joey cigars according <laughs> to profootballnetwork.com the cincinnati bengals were the worst team in the league before joe burrow showed up and now after only two seasons with 2020's number one draft pick under the center. They've got a playoff win under their belt, and they're headed to a second round showdown this Saturday afternoon with the Tennessee Titans. Josh, the Bengals are three and a half point road underdogs versus the number one seeded Tennessee Titans. Do you think the Bengals can pull off the upset this Saturday? Of course, of course I do. I mean, they are, their offense is just really clicking right now. It's a quarterback-driven league. Burrow is a far superior quarterback to Ryan Tannehill. The Titans have a, a, a better, you know, more well-rounded team. Their defense is better. But, I mean, you can't ever count out Joey B. That's right. I That gave me little goosebumps thinking about Joey B doing the impossible and making it to the AFC Championship. Look, it's never good to bet against Joe Burrow. When a man fractures and, like, completely like demolishes his knee and he just sits there stoic faced like that's not a man that buckles under pressure and he is probably so excited to like like beat the tennessee titans and prove to everyone he's better than they are all right well earlier this week colin cowherd on the herd made the case for joe burrow as regular season mvp joe burrow led the league in completion percentage 70.4 he finished sixth in passing yards and thirds and third in yards per game he finished second in passer rating he finished only in 10th in quarterback rating, but that's largely because he was sacked a league leading 51 times. He has no offensive line protection whatsoever. Quarterback rating, unlike passer rating, takes into account a quarterback's rushing statistics. But perhaps Burrow's worst stats and what probably ends up holding him back more than anything 
is that he threw 14 interceptions, which is tied for sixth most in the league. Christina, Joe Burrow trails Aaron Rodgers and Tom Ra- and Tom Brady in MVP odds. Do you think Joe Burrow has a compelling case for the regular season MVP? Look, I know I just said don't bet against Joey B, but... But bet against him on MVP. But when you have Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers in front of you, it's pretty hard to make a case for the second year. And what what do you say, Josh? Has Colin Cowherd left the farm? I mean, that makes for pretty decent like clickbait. But I mean, all those stats, he's probably behind Brady and Rodgers and all of those stats. So like the case he's making is actually just helping Brady and Rodgers more. I think it's going to be Rodgers. Uh, Rodgers doesn't have the passing yards like Brady does, but... I mean, the numbers are just staggering. Like the the QBR, the passer rating, the you know yards per attempt, the lack of interceptions as always, the winning. I mean, either of those two guys is a good pick. I mean, it's not like Joey Burrow isn't deserving of it. It's just that there's guys ahead of him. You know, it's just the reality. Only one person can win. Exactly. Indeed. And it's going to be Rodgers. Okay. All right. Whether or not Joe brings home the MVP award this season, the 25-year-old Burroughs trophy case is already off to a good start. He's got a Heisman Trophy and a college football national championship to his name. Now let's talk about the Joe Burrow card market as we conclude. Joe's 2020 Prism Base PSA 10, which is his rookie card, which has a population of about 2,400, has increased 127% in value over the last month. In fact, for the first time ever, I can see using Card Ladder's Compare Tool that Burroughs' Prism Base PSA 10 value has surpassed Justin Herbert's Burrow is currently selling in the $415 range while Herbert is selling in the $385 range. So Josh, let me ask you a question here. The LaMelo Ball 2020 Prison Base PSA 10 is also right there in the $400 range, but its population is only 492. So the Burrow and the Herbert Prison PSA 10s have the same population at 2400. So if you had $400 to spend on one of those three cards, what would you rather take, the Burrow, the Herbert, or the Lamello? Well, I know you're throwing math at me with these population reports trying to get me to say Lamello, uh, but I wouldn't collect any of these three cards, so therefore, if I'm going to spend $400 and you're making me, let's just ride that gambling wave and ride this Burrow train all the way to Profit Town. <laughs> <laughs> and Christina, the same question to you. And I know you're going to try and fight the hypo, so let's put it... I, I actually re... I, I worked the question for Josh because I know Josh likes to know market cap and he likes to know pops, and I reworked it for you because I already know what you're up to. So let's say you have $400 to blow at a card show mm-hmm. and you have to buy one of these three cards. Mm-hmm. So picture yourself at the show, yeah, yeah. table in front of you, you have mm-hmm. to buy one of the three. Burrow, Herbert, or Lamella, which one are you and taking? And think about leadership. Think about it. Yeah, think about leadership. <laughs> Lead. Well, I'm going to fight this hypo. Oh, Lord. Um, I would be looking to see what wax I could buy for $400 at a card no, show. No, no, don't let her do that. <laughs> there isn't a D. It's A, B, or C. <laughs> um, I'm, honestly, if I'm going to a card show this weekend, like say I'm going Saturday morning and those are my three options, I'm going with Burrow. Ooh. See, Joey Burrow, man, he's irresistible. All right, Burrow's total market (laughs) index and card ladder has increased 34% over the last month. Several of his cards have been setting all-time highs lately, such as the 2020 Contenders Rookie Ticket Autograph Team Logo PSA 10, which last sold for $5,500. Now, I can see using Card Ladder's sales history tool that Burrow's National Treasures RPA at a 99 BGS9 Auto 10 sold for $79,200 with Golden two weeks ago, which gives him the honor of having the ninth highest selling NT RPA 99 of all time. Only Steph Curry, Giannis, Luka, Mahomes, Zion, James Harden, LaMelo Ball, and Justin Herbert have ever had NT RPAs out of 99 sell for more. And I was able to see that list by searching the keywords treasures and 99 on the sales history feature and then sorting by price. So, Josh, final question of today's show. In that same auction that saw Joe Burrow's NTRPA 99 BGS 9 reach $79,200, Mahomes' NTRPA 99 BGS 9 sold for $168,000, and they both had nice patches. What would Joe Burrow need to do in order for the hobby to value him 
as an equal to Patrick Mahomes. I think what the hobby values for young guys is uh, keeping that momentum going, keeping the consistency. I think the hobby does not reward you if you struggle early in your career for a really long time, and then all of a sudden you come out of nowhere and start like winning games. Uh, like Giannis showed consistent growth each year, in and out. And then like Luca has always gotten better. Mahomes consistently Super Bowls, playoffs, like ascending up. So I think it's just going to take him to continually get further along in the playoffs and eventually win a Super Bowl and sustain this sort of, uh, you know, success he's having for multiple seasons. And I'm Christina, calling it now. Yes. He wins the Super Bowl this year. <laughs> if, oh, I said God. if. I said if. Oh, okay. If he wins the Super Bowl this year, <laughs> his price would be what the Mahomes price would be. He only needs to win one Super Bowl for that price <laughs> to be his NTRPA. Man, I think we we uh, put too much gas in the Burrow hype car, <laughs> and now we're just we're hey, speeding wait, on the highway. Wait, is that not out good, of control? Wait, is that not good hobby leadership? Are we not supposed to do that? I mean, <laughs> well, we don't own any Burrow cards, so we're good. We yeah. own no Burrow cards here. Oh, I wish I did though. What a fun guy to root for. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's sports cards culture. Great weekend of football coming up. See you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Tell us in the comment section below what the crew should cover next week. And don't forget to subscribe. See you next time at SCC Sports Cards Culture.